What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of E-Electric Productions. I'm Jay, and I'm bringing you guys a new game today. It's not Road Rash, it's not Road Redemption, no, this is Road Rage. And Road Rage is an open world motorcycle combat game, which sounds great on paper, but how does it actually play out in game? Well, let's jump right in and take a look. Now, I've actually done multiple takes already trying to get a good video for this, and I'm really struggling with it because part of me likes sort of the uh, rough around the edges feel of this game. You know, it just it doesn't feel like one of those um, over polished cookie cutter, you know, AAA titles, which is a good thing because those start to actually feel lifeless in their own way. At the same time, this is so rough around the edges that I it definitely doesn't merit its $30 price tag and it needs a lot of polish and refinement and I'm worried because this game did not release into early access. This released as a full title and if that's the case, then this is a hard pass unfortunately and I'll let you know that right at the beginning of this video. So everything in the game is passed to you uh, via a cell phone with text and a little bit of dialogue. Um, dialogue in the game, let's just Forget about that right now. It's not very good. The voice acting in the game is is pretty poor, pretty uninspired. That doesn't usually make or break a game for me. Um, I'm much more of a gameplay person, so we'll just leave that at that. Um, so I'm going to go over the controls with you first, and that's been the other part of the problem is I've been trying to do this title uh, justice, and there's a lot going on, so I'm going to try to cover it in short order without taking 30 minutes of your guys' time. Okay, so here's the controls really quick. Left with the X does uh, the left melee attack, and the B does the right melee attack. I'm not crazy about the animation, it just looks real spammy. Um, you don't have to spam it, um, but at the same time, you'll find that you kind of need to in order to hit other characters when you're doing races. Um, right trigger speeds you up. Your acceleration for a motorcycle seems extremely slow. There are other unlocks in the game, so I'm hoping that that will improve with other bikes. Uh, left trigger is brake. The bumpers do nothing. Y does a nice little boost for you. And A is your handbrake. So you can handbrake around corners pretty quickly. If you just try to brake and go around corners, it's nowhere near as effective and you slow down very, very quickly. Uh, so you definitely want to utilize that handbrake for taking your turns in game. Now, as far as if you brake really hard, you will not pop a quote-unquote front wheelie. I don't know the proper name for that. I apologize. However, you can go up into a standing wheelie um, almost immediately after hitting the accelerator. And the funny thing is, you could still use your handbrake, not as effectively, but you could still use your handbrake, and you'll actually spawn back into the world <laughs> in, um, in doing a wheelie. <laughs> so I'll try that again. There you go. So you can handbrake around corners while you're doing a wheelie, and I find that to be pretty funny. Um, so that is your basic controls right there. So with that out of the way, the core gameplay here, the meat of the game, is all doled out through your cell phone, as I already said. And then there's also your options menu here, which takes you to the in-game clubhouse. There is not a physical location for that, it's just a menu. So one of the things I was extremely disappointed in is the fact that there is no graphical tweaks or settings for this game. What you see is what you get, that's it. There's a multiplayer, but I haven't touched it. I'm not really interested in it. If you guys are and you want me to do a quick review of the multiplayer, just let me know in the comments section below. But I'm really just looking at the single player aspect of this game right now. And I can tell you from the single player, I'm actually not that interested in trying the multiplayer. Um, the single player is rough enough as it is. When you add in other players, it's just going to get even messier. Uh, if you want a good multiplayer motorcycle game, then I would I'd head over to Road Redemption, personally. So when you go to the clubhouse, there is quite a bit on display here as far as things that you can purchase. Uh, there's a lot of motorcycles, which is nice. It looks like there's at least a dozen or so. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. Yep, there is a, exactly a dozen. There is quite a few weapons. Almost all melee except for the last two, which are ranged. There's a shotgun at the very end, and I think like a crossbow of some kind. Yep, shotgun and crossbow. As far as drivers go, there are a lot of different drivers that you can unlock as you go through. Um, and you can change them up on the fly. You can customize the wheels on your bike, wheel colors, including the spokes and the inner rim. The body, you can change up the colors, the headlights, the gas tank, all that stuff, um, and the body color as well. So you can go in there and actually tweak. Uh, for the body, it's really just the back fin, uh, the back bumper area. 
but uh, you can see there there's there's you know there's a few different different options so you can make the bike look like your own which is nice and you can change up the exhaust as well you can also spin around so you can see that shotgun I don't have it's just the last thing that I was looking at when I was on the weapons menu uh, so don't get too excited for range combat early in the game um, and then you can upgrade your motorcycle. So each bike will allow you to go in and tweak up to three times each of these areas. The two things that are not really tweakable is handling and acceleration, but you can um, increase your speed, your hit points, and your nitrous. So um, I've boosted my suspension, which oddly enough gives me more nitrous. Yeah, I know. It's kind of weird. And that's pretty much the menus in a nutshell. Okay, so from there, let's take a quick look at the map here. Here's the map. So it reminds me of Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. It seems like that was kind of their inspiration here for making this map. And if you go into this purple, orange, yellow, green, or I guess blue slash aquamarine, oh, and purple. If you go into these areas prematurely before the story sends you there, you instantly accrue a five-star wanted rating level and uh, the cops will come after you. Okay, so we've done that. If you hit pedestrians, they have a very weird reaction in this game. If you hit them fast enough, they just, it's hard to explain, they don't have very natural reactions. Um, in fact, as you race along, a lot of times you'll see the pedestrians um, ahead of you and they start off with that little stance with their arms and legs spread until you get closer, so like they're loading in. So we've got the cops on our tail right now. And that brings me to my next point, the AI in this game. The AI really struggles with being able to um, navigate the races, navigate the in-game world. The cops will run into other things in each other much more than they will be able to get you. Usually the cops are only going to get you when you crash into something and then they all converge on you in a giant pile that reminds you of a Saturday morning cartoon car chase. Um, yeah. If you hit things in this game, be prepared to explode. Now, I'm sure I'll make a liar of myself. Yep, there we go. But it is hilarious some of the things that will cause your bike to explode in this game. There's been times where I have just bumped into... Yeah, now it's making me a total liar. I have just bumped into guardrails before and my bike explodes. And it almost seems like the longer you play, the more prone your bike is to blowing up. So you can lose the cops fairly easily when you just have one star. But let me go ahead and leave this starting area. So we're going to head out here into the countryside. And this brings me to my next issue with the game. <laughs> the When you're trying to navigate the off-road areas, um, I understand this isn't a dirt bike, it's a street bike, but it does not control very well when you're... Um, I'm actually trying to get my bike to explode and now it just it won't do it. It knows that I want it to explode and now it's just like, no, nope, not going to do it. Stuff like that happens a lot. Like, I didn't hit anything. It just, your bike will wipe out for no really good reason. The game's just like, I don't want you to go over there, and so it just crashes. It's really weird. Uh, it does it when you're near water a lot. Um, I mean, because look, I can go over there, and I can even come up here. So if you're thinking like, okay, well, the game just doesn't want you to go, to go there, you cannot go up inclines like that. Like, you can just forget about it the game struggles with letting you go up, you know, uh, inclined surfaces a lot. And if they're steep at all, you're not going to be able to do it. Okay, so that's that. You'll notice as far as the world building is concerned, um, there's lots of places where trees are not connected to the ground, buildings aren't perfectly connected to the ground. Um, this is just fit and finish stuff. It's not make or break, but it is noticeable and it, it breaks some of the immersion. Um, let's see what else. You'll notice the AI cars piling up sometimes when they get stuck uh, in the open world. And even though there's cops everywhere, we haven't really seen cops yet because they just have a hard time catching up to you and navigating uh, to your position like I kind of already said. So you could race around. You can have some fun. That was uh, one of the police vehicles back there. But the sad thing is, is that the world just feels kind of bland. It just feels kind of boring, like in very short order the fun of racing around this environment it just gets old and you're just like oh, okay yeah you know that was that was fun for a few minutes um so now we're back into the suburbs which means we should lose our uh, police rating sooner than later and these little blockades that appear are pretty pointless um 
they they're easy to avoid you can crash through almost everything except for the cop car themselves so they don't feel like a real threat at all except for times when you hit barriers that should move out of the way and simply don't and uh, and that's the other thing well that's another thing that I've noticed is that there's times where the game is indecisive on you know what you're allowed to do and not allowed to do there'll be times where I can go over a guardrail and then there's other times where I can't uh, sometimes I'll hit a pedestrian and they'll go flying. Other times I'll hit them and they'll just stand there like nothing happened. Um, the game just, it's not consistent. And all of these things just break immersion and just make you, remind you that this is definitely not a AAA title at all. Uh, but with a $30 price tag, I mean, you know, AAA title is $60, so I expect this to be at least half the quality um, of a AAA title, and I'd say it's more like a quarter of the quality. Um, and that brings me to my recommended price point, which for this would be like, I'd say like $12. 8 to 15 is the range that I would deem to be reasonable. I would definitely be leaning towards that eight, um, $8 price range, 8 to $12 price range. Um, so I would wait for a sale if you're interested in this. But even more than that, the fact that it's, <laughs> the fact that it's not, um, an early access title is the thing that really worries me the most, that this is just going to be dropped and left and <laughs> and then that's it. Like, it's never going to be touched again. So, finally got busted. They take away some of your cash. Let's jump into a mission. So here's instant missions. There's time trials, eliminations, and we'll do the elimination. And the loading times are, are fairly quick. So at the end of each lap, the last rider is bumped completely and what I found here is the best thing you can do is to ignore the combat portion completely and just race whoopsies so I'm gonna do just that you kinda saw the combat there it's flailing wildly hit detection is really really wonky and what I found for these kinds of races, and for most of the races, except for the ones that absolutely positively demand... Oh, I was going way too fast there. Except for the races that demand that you uh, actually defeat other enemies, don't bother. Just leave the combat alone. And that's not a good thing. I mean, you know, you've got a game where it, it boasts the fact that you can do combat, and then you avoid combat. So it might get better with some of the other weapons in the game. And, you know... I. At the end of the day, I would say this title is not terrible. There are far worse titles out there that try to do open world, and then you actually play their open world, and it's like one city block, and you're like, this is it? You're calling this open world? This actually has a reasonably sized open world. Uh, the, the question is, is, is it fun to actually to, to play in? Uh, is it fun to race around in and explore? And I'd say no, not, not really, unfortunately. Um, you know, there's combat to take part in. Is the combat fun? No, not really. There's races. Are the races fun? Uh, no, the, the physics on the bikes feel off. You don't lean as much as you should. It doesn't feel like my bike has weight to it. Um, it feels like I'm stuck on the road, like on a toothpick. When I hit the gas, I go. When I hit the brake, I stop. And when I hit my um, handbrake, yes, I slide, but it, it never feels like I'm actually riding a bike. Like It never feels like you're really racing along the streets, taking hairpin turns, and you know always one second away from just losing control. It doesn't have that feel to it. See, there's a CPU guy crashed there on the sidewalk. And even now, like, this, you're going through the motions for most of the races, and I think that's the difference between a good racer and a poor racer. A good racer, you get almost emotionally invested in the races. You get your blood pumping, your adrenaline going, um, you know, you feel the tension, the stress of the race. A bad racer, you're just going through the motions. You're hitting all the right buttons to make all the right turns, and you're, you know, you're trying to get your time, your timing down right and whatnot. And uh, see, that guy couldn't make the turn either. Um, and that's the difference between a good racer and a, and a poor racer. And this one is just way too much going through the motions and not enough heart, not enough soul. It just, it just feels uninspired, um, unfortunately. So, the music in the game's not terrible. It's just highly forgettable. It's high octane, it's, you know, it's bumping, but it's just, it's just super forgettable. Um, <clears throat> and at the end of the day, I don't feel like I'm invested in whether or not I win or lose most of these races. It's, you know, there's not much penalty for, for losing, and you can just try again, and it's just not, 
It's not exciting. It's not thrilling. So, even for these checkpoints, you don't actually have to hit the checkpoints. You can go around the checkpoints, and it still counts. If you're in the general vicinity of the checkpoints, good enough. So there's one racer left, and I'm going to go through here and race one. Mission passed. You still earn cash, even though I've already done this, which means you can spam... Um, Let's go to another instant mission. Oh, no, 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 no. What is going on? It's like flicking automatically back to another... Um, there was another one. Assassination. Okay, so this one I have to do combat. So, here we go. And there's three targets available. I've got to take out two of them in under two and a half minutes. So, here we go. And most of the challenge here is just trying to catch up to the characters. Because taking them out is just a matter of spamming that stupid melee button. Trying not to crash. <laughs> what is going on here? And it just... I don't know. You don't feel like you're in control and, you know, you're you're pulling up on this guy. And I don't know. This should be exciting. But it's not. Instead, it's, it's more of a chore... He's really flying, though. I'll say that, at least. And he's making it really hard to, like, pull up on him. There we go. There we go. So now the problem's going to be, do I even have enough time to catch up to this other player? They're going to be coming this way. So what just happened there is I actually, if you hold in the X button, you will contextually move towards the other biker. Um, it's really jarring. So when I did that sh super hard turn around right there, that wasn't me doing that. Um, that was actually holding that context key and my bike trying to move automatically to the other, uh, to the other, let's do circuit race, to the other player or the other AI enemy. And this is it. Race through multiple checkpoints and laps. First of the finish line wins. And I'll show you what I mean. So, if I just hold X... Oh, now it's not doing it. You can just sit here and go through and race along. And because there's not rubber banding, thankfully, um, it's, it's fairly easy to pull ahead of the competition and stay ahead of the competition. I mean, they're, they're pretty far back there right now. Let's go ahead and crash through all this stuff and... The chances of them catching up to me at this point are pretty much nil. And I hate rubber banding in games, so I'm actually not holding that against this title. Um, you know, if, if you're good enough... That was weird. Oh, is it because of the lap? Oh, okay, there's multiple laps. Um, yeah, I hate rubber banding, so I'm not holding it against this title. If you're good enough to get ahead of the AI, good on you. Um, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't have to be subjected to them blasting all the way up to you at, you know, 200 miles an hour just because you got ahead of them. But, um, this guy's actually caught up to me. He will probably wreck, though, himself. Maybe? No? It's actually better than I've seen them do in the past, so that's that's good. Um, and, and there are moments in this game where you will find yourself enjoying the gameplay. There are. And then there's other moments where you will quickly be reminded why this should not be a $30 title. So District Unlocked. Uh, I'm not going to pronounce that. Chitali? Chitali? Mission Unlocked. Do you have what it takes? Sub Detroit. Free Mission Unlocked. Vehicle Unlocked. The Decimator. So last thing we'll do here. Let's go to the clubhouse. Motorcycles. Okay. It said there was... Okay, so it's un it's available for purchase. Got it. I already have 30,000 in-game currency. Um, I've got a pipe, a crowbar. What else do I have? Unlock to me. A hockey puck. Or a hockey stick. A hockey puck. Let's do the... Uh, let's do the hockey stick. Here we go. None of the drivers are available to for unlock yet. Customize the body. There we go. Like that one. There we go. Wheel color. 
Oops. Let's change up the saturation there. So you can see that the customization's pretty, um, it's pretty simple. I mean, it's not anything super complex. Um, it's, it's nice that they added it in though. So you can do that. We can go to the body. Oops, there we go, body color, paint type. We got pearl. And there we go. And then finally the exhaust. Even when you totally paint your vehicle, um, it's not uncommon for it to still look kind of just eh. But nevertheless, it's nice that they even offer it uh, for you to utilize. And then we can upgrade our motorcycle too. Let's see, let's definitely bump up acceleration. And body. And finally handling. There we go. And then, yes, everything in the game is done through the phone. And then you've got different things on the world map here that you can go ahead and jump into and try. And that's it. I mean, that's the game in a nutshell. If this looks like something that's fun for you, then I highly recommend waiting for a lower price. Uh, devs, if you happen to watch this or listen to this, I think that you actually have what could be a fun game on your hands here. If you could do some tweaks to it and some polish and maybe you know work on handling a little bit. Um, I think that the, there's a fun game here, and if it's given a little bit more time, attention, and care, it uh, could really turn into sort of a hidden gem, you know, a game that, that people um, may not ever go mainstream in, in, its, in people playing it, but at least it would be something that is get some positive reviews on Steam and people enjoy playing, and, you know, I think it would garnish a, a smaller but, but good following. Uh, because it is it is a lot more fun than a lot of the tripe that just gets thrown up on Steam these days, and there's there's more on offer here than the typical cash grab. So, good job for that at least. But guys, that's pretty much going to wrap up this review at this point. Uh, if you guys would like to see me play more of this, just let me know in the comment section below. And uh, you know, if if you want to see me hop on and try to do the multiplayer again, just let me know in the comment section. But as always, I appreciate you guys stopping by, hanging out, and watching, uh, watching the video review. And I look forward to seeing all of you on the next episode of Electric Productions. Game on, everyone.